drone detection or weather sensing, for indoor or industrial deployments, worker safety improvement or intrusion detection, and finally, improvement of the communication performance of the network itself. 6G can give us the ability to fuse the human, physical, and digital world. And by expanding our awareness beyond our nearby surroundings, we are building a safer and more productive environment for all. Again, those in our abundance community, I talk about this all the time, that we're living in a world right now of, of some 50 billion connected devices, uh, a trillion sensors out there, right? Our cell phones have anywhere from 10 to 20 sensors. My Apple Watch, my Aura Ring, my little embedded RFID chip on my, on my hand. But it's just the beginning. We're heading towards a point where by 2030, the likelihood is we'll have 100 trillion sensors. Um, every autonomous car is generating some 750 megabytes of data per second. Um, drones flying in the air. We're all going to have some very cool eventual, you know, augmented reality glasses that have forward looking cameras that are imaging the world in millimeter um, imagery or, or better. And we're heading towards a world of radical transparency. And in a world of radical transparency, uh, everything is knowable and seeable. And it's literally less important what you know, it's more important the questions you ask um, because you can know anything. Uh, he said, we are heading towards a radical transparency. In other words, everything you do will be known. They're trying to keep tabs of everything you do. Every, every single thing you do. But in this transparency, it doesn't mean what they are doing, you have to know. <laughs> you understand? What they are doing, you don't have to know. But what you are doing, how you are living, whatever it is you are thinking, they want to know. That is what he means by radical transparency. In other words, it's going to be way... Your mind can't even begin to comprehend how much control they're about to have over your life, over everything you do. Why? Because the wicked elites, which Jacob Rothschild, who just died, is one of them, they have a God complex. And only, uh, only the Creator, which the Creator is the God of the Bible, has that kind of power to keep that kind of tabs on you. But to them, they are your gods, right? They are your new gods. So you are their serfs, their subjects. This is why they don't think uh, they don't think twice to tweak your genetic makeup. They don't think twice to tamper your DNA, right? Through the food you eat, the water you drink, everything. Like I said, the old saying, you are what you eat. So you can imagine how you know, feeding your GMOs, how much it corrupts your gene pool, your genetic makeup, your DNA, all these things fuses itself. Like the, uh, the lady that was narrating the clip before this guy came in, they said that the whole idea of what they're trying to do is to fuse the physical, biological, natural world with the pseudo digital world. You see what I'm saying? The fake digital world. So kind of like to turn people into cyborgs. That's what they're trying to do. And the guy was showing you how his RFID microchip, which you already have embedded in him, right? Showing you his Apple Watch and, you know, the uh, sunglasses that is made of uh, digital whatever, right? So this is exactly what they want. And he said this is just the beginning, right? If you've seen the... Uh, the animation cyberpunk something it was on netflix about a year uh, two years ago i believe 2022 that's exactly what they're trying to do they're trying to have you in this digital messed up world right we, you know think about the movie uh ready player one right i believe it was directed by uh steven spielberg right ready player one while the uh physical natural world the real world is decaying they're having this digital world where you know you can do anything you want and 
you know, get away with whatever you want to get away with, right? So that's that's what they want. And what does that lead back to? To their God complex. They're trying to give you their own world, right? Where they have total control of your mind, your thought process, everything there is you do. They have control over that lock, stocked, and barreled, right? So that's what they're trying to do. So it behooves you to be aware of their plan so you don't fall hook, line, and sink up to their plan. Because nothing is stopping them. They're looking to achieve this. This is what they're trying to, this is the world they're trying to achieve. They call it the fourth industrial revolution where they fuse or merge the digital world with the natural world, which you are part of the uh, biological, natural, real world. So they're trying to fuse you with tech. Think of uh, Iron Man, right? Iron Man, he fused himself with tech. Pretty much his heart was that of a technology advancement, right? So that's the kind of thing they're trying to do to the uh, population. Uh, hence why they're trying to reduce, you know, the number of people that are around. Because for them to be able to control and have all those data, they have to have a, a controllable amount of people going back to uh, Georgia Guystones, right? To reduce the uh, to maintain humanity on that 500 million, so they're looking to do a whole lot of stuff. They're looking to do a whole lot of stuff. And this clip we just seen, it's like a, a, a small clue to that. It's a four minute video. I didn't want to play the whole thing. I just got the uh, part that was very informative, right? So before we go any further, this is Isaiah the 14th chapter. And the 14th verse, it reads, I will ascend above above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. That's their mindset. Uh, so uh, let's start at 13 verse. It says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the Most High. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation and the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakudash, double honors to apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Who taught us this truth and continue to teach us this truth. Peace, salutation, shalom, shalom, shalom to all your hopeful elect brothers and sisters out there that of the household of faith and to you brothers that are teaching this truth in honesty and in sincerity to you I say shalom, right? I was just going through uh, some of the channels that I'm, I'm sub to in uh, Telegram and uh, I found that clip you know, it had me thinking, man, this is this is the God complex of the wicked elites. You see, like uh, there's this TV series called The American Gods, and that's exactly what it, they are. They are the American Gods. And in this TV series, they had the uh, God of technology, the God of social media, which are the new gods, right? And they had the old gods, you know, the uh, Greco-Roman gods and things like that, right? Babylonian gods and all that, right? And then the newer gods are now, you know, your technology, your social media, uh, all kinds of all kinds of newer gods, right? Some of them escapes me now because it's been a while I've seen that. But yeah, that's exactly what it is. So now, like it says here in Isaiah, the 14th chapter, beginning from the 13th verse, it says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the Most High. Stars of God. And who is that talking about? It's talking about the wicked elites of the Edomites, which Jacob's Rothschild is one of those. That's exactly who the scripture here is talking about. It's not talking about something else like a lot of people will read this and equate that to, you know, the spiritual angel, Satan, right? Or they think Lucifer, which Lucifer is just a term meaning light bearers, just like somebody, the Illuminatis, you know, the illuminated ones. What are they? They are the light bearers, but it, it is the false light 
So their false light pushes them, urges them to come up with all this technology, which they say, quote unquote, is supposed to be uh, safe and effective. It's supposed to help you and all that, right? But ultimately, it is to jack you up. That's exactly what it is. I was researching some of the uh, uh, effects and usefulness of graphene oxide, right? So this is that's why they incorporate technology like that. They use the graphene oxide, you know, in some of these things that they put in you, if you know what I mean, because it has the ability to cross, you know, your blood-brain barrier. It has the ability to go directly into your bloodstream and all that, right? So they use all of this, you know, they use the biosensors, right? Uh, the messenger, you know, messenger, MR, you know, if you know what I mean. So they use that, all this technology, the nanotechnology, nanoparticles, you know, all these things fuses itself into you in some way, shape or form you are you become like a hybrid because none of these things belong in your body believe it or not right so that's exactly what they do so to them they they pride themselves to be gods and you are their subjects so anything they do to you is okay it's a okay they can do whatever they want with you you are their goyim you see what i'm saying so the scriptures affirms that the scriptures telling you how they feel their mindset, their thought process. And what is that? It says, uh, I will sit also upon the con- upon the mouth of the congregation and the sides of the north and the uh, stars of the Most High. Talking about, I will exalt my throne above the stars of the Most High are the true biblical Israelites. They are the stars of the Most High, beginning with the elect of Israel, right? The 144,000 and the rest of the one third, you know, these are the stars. And now, the uh, their their enemy, the sworn enemies of the Israelites, which are the Edomians, also known as the Edomites, they have this God complex, which they're trying to uh, exalt themselves over the true biblical Israelites. You have to understand these are these two uh, entities are brothers, Esau and Jacob. They are both brothers. And the blessing that was supposed to go to Esau was given to Jacob. So he, throughout Esau's reincarnations, throughout his life on earth, he's been trying to get that blessing back. So now the ultimate way he's trying to do it is through technology. He's trying to use that technology, which that technology boils down to the mark of the beast. This is why the scripture tells you not to take it. Because once you take it, you pledge your allegiance to the uh, wicked elites of the Edomites. Once you take it, you're you're telling them that you are my God and I'm your creation. This is why once you do that, the only remedy for you is to be totally destroyed. You see what I'm saying? The 14th verse, it says, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the most high. That's what he wants trying to do. He wants to be like the true biblical God, which his name is Yahweh, meaning he is. He is existence. So they want to be that. Like the old red man song, I'll be that. I'll be that. Right. You know, they want to be that. But the thing is, they can't. But they will be allowed to achieve some of this to some extent with this technology, with the six Gs, you know, with the, uh, you know, using the pharmaceuticals and, you know, the big farmers and all that. They will be able to go so far with it, you see, because the Bible tells you that they will so far so that all transaction will be done digitally. And you can see the infrastructure is already set up. That's why the scripture talks about in uh, Revelation, the 13th chapter, and the 16th verse, right? That he will cause every, who is the he? The wicked elites of the Edomites, the wicked elite Idumians. These are the ones that are going to do this. And they're already doing it. They're telling you, they have these meetings in Davos talking about this. 
you have Klaus Schwab saying very soon there will be a brain computer interface where people will be uh, telepathically passing thoughts to one another. And how are they? They have Elon Musk do, doing his thing with the neural link. You see? And the, the, the clip we just saw, the guy, he already has an RF, RFID microchip embedded in his hand. You see what I'm saying? So this is not a far-fetched thing. This is something that is happening right now. Life at your venue is taking place here on Earth in our time frame, right? In our generation is going on. So that's what the Bible is telling you. And the people doing this, they have this God complex. It says the 15th verse, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the size of the pit. What is that hell? Hell is a position of difficulty. When, when somebody is catching, going through some you know crazy situation, it will be like, I'm going through hell. It doesn't mean some place in the middle of the earth where you burn forever. It just means uh, either, either your grave when you die, they put you six feet below, that is hell, that meaning grave, or metaphorically, it is a situation where you catch nothing but hell. You go through difficult times. So this is what awaits the wicked elite of the Idumians for everything they've done, right? Rightfully so, man. Look at the look at the state of the earth. Now they're looking at, you know, uh, put micro... Uh, uh, mark of the you know what in every living thing they've succeeded in polluting the water they've succeeded in tweaking with our dna our genetic makeup right they've done that they've done all manner of unthinkable things you see what i'm saying that's where we at with it so that is them being like the most high but they have to catch hell for all they've done you cannot impersonate the God of the Bible you cannot impersonate the king of the universe and think you can get away with it. You cannot impersonate him and uh, uh, fuck up his creation, excuse my French, and think you can get away with it. That's what the scripture is saying here. You, you are about to catch nothing but hell, pure hell. You see? It says, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble that these shake kingdoms, right? The wicked elites. So when they are catching this hell, think of the movie uh, Planet of the Apes with uh, Charles Heston, right? That one, like the very first one. You see what I'm saying? When he, you know, they went to space, he came back. The apes were now ruling the earth, right? And they were subjected. So, you know, man, quote unquote, we are subjected to some hardcore slavery they are being put in bondage so seeing uh the wicked elites go from owning everything owning even people through the contracts you signed when you were born the birth certificate social security all of that now to top it off they're trying to put that karagma which is the mark of the you know what mark of the beast inside of you so this is how they own people they own it all. So they will go from that state to a lowly state. They will own nothing. Here it is that they're telling people you own nothing and be happy. Well, it's about to happen to them. All the mansions they own, all the estates they own, the gold they've been hoarding for a very long time will be taken, all of it will be taken away from them. Every single one of it. You see what I'm saying? So that is their future. That is what they have to look forward to. You see? So when, when they're catching this hell, imagine you seeing Jacob Rothschild in a very lowly state, you know, tilling the ground, you know, picking cotton. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Burying the dead people. That is what you're about to see. Begging for food. They're about to be in that kind of low estate, having a whole foot up their ass. You see what I'm saying? So that is, when you see them like that, the people that will see them be like, oh man, is this really the guy that owns everything, right? The, the banking families that own the bank, the estates. Now look at them, you know, pitiful, in a very pitiful state. You see what I'm saying? That's what the scripture is saying here. It says, uh, saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? Yeah, 
They funded the wicked elites, beginning with the Rothschild. They funded both sides of the wars, both the uh, World War One, World War Two, even all the skirmishes and proxy wars and things like that. They are all behind it. Uh, 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 Federal Reserve, they're behind it. Your banking system, they're behind it. Wall Street, they're behind it. All of it, they're behind it. You see what I'm saying? So they'll go from shaking kingdoms and earth to nothing at all. Nothing at all. Right? You know, it goes on and on and on, but let's get this final scripture. Because there has to be a day of reckoning. And that rec day of reckoning is coming sooner than you think. Sooner than you think. So the God complex has to be abolished. The God complex has to be made null and void. This is uh, 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, uh, the, uh, the chapter, and the third verse. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. Yeah, because you're living in the flesh. You don't have to uh, 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 fight your, I mean, you, you fight the carnalities, the temptations that come with it, but you are still in the flesh. You know, you, you can't let it overcome you, right? And you, you, don't, you don't use your flesh to, like he says here, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So you have to live spiritually, not everything. You have to, you know, be carnal about it, meaning uh, fleshly about it, you know. Can be out here committing abominations, eating all kinds of abominable things, right? Being adulterous, being a, a murderer, you see what I'm saying? So this is how you war after the flesh, you know, by fulfilling the deeds of the flesh. So you have to be more spiritual. I mean, we slip, we fall. That's what, that's why our Lord Yahweh Shah had to, you know, come and make the sacrifice which He made, right? But you don't use your grace period as a cloak of maliciousness. So you have to do everything you can to be more spiritual. That's what the scripture is talking about here. It said, "But mighty." Uh, through the through the most high to the pulling down of strongholds. What are those strongholds? Well, the fifth verse, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of the most high. Right? Going into all these technological, so-called savvy technological advancements, right? That they're coming up with. You see what I'm saying? All of that has to be cast down, the mark of the beast, you know? Telling you uh, it is okay to augment your reality with some digital uh, bugged out things. You see what I'm saying? So these are all the wayward imaginations, the philosophies of the world, right? Telling you it's okay for a man and a man to go at it, a woman and a woman to go at it. All these are nothing but uh, imaginations of men that is nothing but wickedness. So it has to be cast down. Another one is the true image of the God of the Bible and his only begotten son. That too has to be cast down. You see what I'm saying? These are all nothing but lies. The pseudoscience, the falsehoods, the uh, renaissance, the iconoclasm, right? These are all the imaginations of men, especially the wicked elites, that has to be cast down. It says, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Right? Like we were reading earlier. The wicked elites with their God complex, they're trying to exalt themselves above the Most High, or above the knowledge of the Most High. They will even go further and tell you there's no God. Right? They push that Darwinism lie, which is nothing but pseudoscience. Right? They push that to the masses out there to eliminate the idea of a creator. And they make themselves one, right? Well, they eliminate the true idea of a true God. And now, once that is out the way, because there's always got to be a God, right? Now, they present themselves as the God. And when they do that, they will uh, expect you to follow and obey what they tell you to do. Just like you will follow and obey the rules, the commandments of the true biblical God. 
right? So that's all those ideologies has to be cast down. The uh, do as thou wilt type of mindset has to be cast down and is being cast down, right? It says, I'm bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, right? That's what it is. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your disobedience is fulfilled. So ultimately, like the scripture says, uh, obedience is better than sacrifice. So you have to obey the laws that are written in the Bible. You have to obey the words of God instead of the words of man. You know, and with that, all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Dash. Double on us to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. See you next time, Lord. Shalom. Shalom.